Hello, I'm Gary Light, and welcome to Access All Areas. The Hawks won't lose another game. The Saints won't win one. Damo, this season is teaching a lot of people that you don't go the early crow. It can be a dangerous practice, can't it? The early crow, particularly in this season, which is looming, is fascinatingly open. But, guys, one early crow made by a lot of people, and I think you were, were a part of this uh, this group, was uh, on Carlton Footy Club and mm -hmm. the struggles they were going to have. And after round six, we now know those struggles are real and that the changes that have been mooted are now going to be taking place. Yeah, well, the early crow for me was that they weren't that good mm -hmm. as a footy side pre, pre um, the season starting. So. I'm not overly surprised where they're at. But my theme for this round and for on the back of the opening there of what we just said is that it's never as bad as you seem, it's never as good as it seems. It's pretty bad though when you lose to Brisbane Lions, Gary, yeah. at home. Oh, you carried me early. No, it's bad. No, it is bad. And look, Mick probably won't coach beyond this year, almost certainly won't coach beyond this year. Um, that playing group have now got to dig in and, and try and um, uh, retain some semblance of credibility. But... You know, they're in a massive hole, but I mean, you know, it is what it is. They're not a very good playing list. I think they've recruited very well and, and um, they got their whack. You're always big on about how a team responds to, to a disaster. And, and that disaster came in round five to Carlton with that uh, almost non-show effort against Collingwood. Yeah. The leaders, when this game was there to be won at three-quarter time yesterday, mm. did not stand up in the last quarter. Yeah, well, I am big on the response and uh, they are not capable of giving the strong response. You know, they, they would say that their, I think I heard me quoted, their effort was better and all those sorts mm. of things, but they're just not capable. Gibbs had, uh, Gibbs had, had two handballs in the last quarter, Murphy had one possession, Walker had two. These are the blokes are supposed to be driving them forward, I mean, game in the balance, we know what sort of situation. So. When that response is there, mm. when there's such a big issue at hand, um, just not capable. You're, you're not a knee-jerk uh, no. reactor, but do, when you have the, the chairman refusing to rule out the possibility of those bigger names being traded, and, and with what they've produced to this point of the season, are they playing for their Carlton careers in the next 16 weeks? Um, they might be playing for their Carlton careers. They're not playing for their careers. I mean, they're always, those guys are quality players. They're going to get opportunity somewhere else. But, um, look, I don't know whether Mark Murphy would be in that group. Maybe he is. But mm. I think everyone else would probably be pretty much on notice. Another early crow made uh, at the start of the season was that the Power would make a, a grand final. That's uh, obviously in some doubt now, given uh, their scoreline and, mm. and what happened yesterday against the team that they were meant to beat, the Eagles. Never as bad as you think, never as good as you think. I mean, West Coast Eagles, they lose Mitch Brown, they lose McKenzie, Jack Darling hasn't been able to get on the park. I mean, everyone said that's the end. That defence stood up when it mattered most, though, mate. 19 inside 50s they had Port Adelaide in the last quarter for a return of two goals, too. And that's without Brown, that's without McKenzie, and that's with the guys like Shepard stepping up. It's like, well, Bellingham, who seemed a gritty team yeah. yesterday. Uh, Shannon Hearn down there in the back half. They took the game on when they needed to. They were threatened. I, was, I caught the last quarter of this. and I mean, Adelaide over with, West, with Port Adelaide coming back with a head of steam. 19 inside 50s. That's a fair feather in their cap for the West Coast Eagles. They were one and two goes, the Eagles. Yep. And, and now they're sitting very prettily uh, up the top of the ladder or just behind Fremantle. Mm. Their draws looming as a, as a nice uh, scenario for them. Suns, St Kilda, Geelong at home and then North. They, they could really entrench a final's berth in the next yeah. month. Dangerous practice that day, mate. We sat here, both you and I, last week and said, let's have a look at Western Bulldogs and their draw opens up beautifully. Mm. And here we are a week later. Um, and they're on the back of a belt, not a belting, on the back of one of the great comebacks of all time from a St Kilda side who weren't supposed to win a game. So, never as bad as it seems. And the, the reason they won that game, Gaz, was for this uh, young uh, potential superstar, uh, Billings. I love this boy. I'm always at the theory when these young kids get drafted, it's where you go, depends on sometimes how quickly you rate them. I mean, had he gone to Hawthorne this bloke, yep. with everything around him, I actually wrote this, I mean, he could be anything. I think he's a super talent. He kicked three goals, had ten possessions, but what I love more, was that he made a couple of mistakes, bad mistakes, when he should have sent it a ball to a to In the a last teammate. quarter. In the last quarter. Yeah, they were bad mistakes. Yeah, and he missed two shots, and I thought, well... Other players would go into their shell and say, no, nah, let someone else take on the responsibility. Right here, defining moment. They've got a goal mm. up. I mean, that, that is a super mark, super strong mark. So he took that on his shoulders and said, I'll be the match winner. It was a fantastic response. Western Bulldogs were outstanding in the mm. first half. Um, that's a, that, that win will be worth eight. For yeah, the coming off the, the, yeah. the nasty loss to Essendon last yeah. week when they should have won two. Guys, that, that's a young player you've just told out of there. What about this uh, this guy at the other end of his career, Nick Revold? Uh, changing role, do you, do you like it, the wing role? Oh, I loved it because um, he, he tried to do what Nick does so very well. He ran up and back, up and back. It was his first game back. He blew himself up. Yeah. Uh, when you're playing the wing, Damo, you can't get double teamed. As, uh, opposition sides won't drop a man back onto the wing mm. to double team you. So he, if he was to play 
50 percent of his time there, he's going to get one on ones. And I don't, no, I don't care who you're playing. Yep. Um, if you're going to play one player out there on a wing with Nick Revolt, you're going to have your heart in your mouth. So yep. I think that'll happen more and more. And it gives Josh Bruce the opportunity. He was second on the Coleman uh, medal tally leading into that game. Gives him more opportunity too. The Giants were humiliated last week in Perth, but uh, bounced back amazingly well against uh, the team that wasn't going to lose a game all year. Yeah, it's a Hawthorne. Yeah, good are they? They, um, I mean, their development continues. We love what they've been able to do. They've got young players. We know they've got quality young players. What you hope then is that, that over time that they can become leaders in their own right. And, I mean, they're playing the reigning Premier. I think three times they're 20 points behind. Three times they found a way to get back yeah. in. And courage under fire. Some young kids there when the game's on the line running back with the flight of the footy. Adam Kennedy here, Damo. I mean, look at the score line. Yep. You, you never write the Hawks off with four minutes to go. Never once flinched. No, he didn't. Never took his eye off the footy. And he does it again here. Only moments later. Still, you know, Hawks are coming. Goes back with the flight of the footy. I mean, Jack Gunson's going to mark that. Jack Gunson had Davis off, off, the, off the bit there. And Tommy Bug here goes. Just again, that desperation to just to ensure the balls go back, back outside the 50 and yep. uh, they win the game. Uh, worries for the Hawks? Apart from their jumper. We'll get that in a minute, but yeah. are there worries for them? I mean, they... uh, no. I'll tell you what, uh, who I wouldn't want to have been on the weekend, and that was Jordan Lewis and or Luke Hodge. Yep. There's Alistair Clarkson walk back into the change room. Sean Makers is not up to it, I guess. No, he's had, been given plenty of opportunities, and uh, no Frawley, uh, no Lake, and no Spanger gave Sean Makers an opportunity. He didn't seem to grab a hold of it, so he's in a bit of a crossword. Crossroad. The Tigers in Hobart, guys, oh. against North Melbourne. They were in the game until mm. they did some very silly and strange things. Uh, Alex Rance, again, you could say he was maybe a little bit late, but he certainly didn't need to do that. And then that just gave away some 50s here. Edwards, again, arguably unlucky, but the rules are the rules. And yeah. then Dustin Martin copped a, uh, a bit of a spray post-match from his, uh, his coach for going across the ground. And well, that's more of a concern, Damo, than the 50s. I mean, they were yep. a little bit split-second, maybe a bit stupid, but these are the things that would be playing on the minds of Richmond supporters and indeed Damien Hardwick. Yep. Slow uh, change of direction, gives opportunity for other teams to get inside, turnover kicks like this, you know, I mean, why would you go short when it wasn't even a 50-50, it was a 20-80. And then, then there's another one. You go into the corridor only when your man can play on Damo. That's yep. the basic rule. Right. So these are real fundamental things that Damien Harbert would be just scratching his head over. And, and they resolved in, I think, seven, six of their seven goals came from turnovers. In that patch, mm. yep. Josh Cowan made a, a comeback as after three and a half years out of football and uh, didn't last uh, no. long at all, unfortunately, with no. that hamstring going again. He's had hamstring and Achilles problems. Some are pretty disposed to it, Damo, and I don't know much about this young man other than it was great to see him back out there, and that would have been heartbreaking. Yep. I think Ben Reid from the Collingwood Footy Club, predisposed to soft tissue stuff. This man too, predisposed to knees. Clay Smith went down in the second quarter of this game uh, against uh, St Kilda, and then Came back on, guys, despite already having done two knee reconstructions. You can see there, for, mm. for no reason, he just crumples, yeah. to the, falls to the ground with that knee crumpling. Um, yeah. There's questions I want to get answers to as to why he went back out on yeah. after it. I, I'm not second-guessing what happened there, but I, no, I'd understand. like answers. I understand, and, and there's no question they'll be asking the question. I know uh, Zimmer and uh, Jakey Landsberger, the doctors there, I mean, they've had the best intentions and, and uh, uh, the health of those boys for such a long time. Mm. But you'd like to know what yeah. the process was. No Still doubt. seeking a response yeah, to the sure. on it. Now tell me what happened with uh, Mitch Clark, Damo, because... Look, um, a few things, guys. It is just a, a, another stage of his battle with, as he's been diagnosed, clinical depression. There, look, we've spoken to people who did see Mitch Clark engaged in conversation with someone across the other side of the fence. We also know that Geelong players, rightly, were, were telling him what to do in certain, certain circumstances late in that game. That happens a dozen times, dozens mm. of times a game, guys. There's no reason for it. That photo there, extraordinary photo by Michael Wilson, another great photo by him, sums it up. And, yeah. and Chris Scott, I've spoken to him uh, regularly since the, the incident. It's just another stage of, of his battle with the condition. Mm. And Chris Scott and every single person at Geelong Footy Club will be there for Mitch. He might be uh, fine. He might be training this week. He might be playing this weekend. But they just don't know. Uh, we wish him well. No, it's, a, it's an ongoing battle for sure. Travis Cloak got an ongoing battle of a different type. And this is his goal kicking. I don't know what else you can say that hasn't already been said, Damo. It's just, it's just an ordinary kick for goal. Well, it's not fixable, is it? Clearly. Well, the thing that frustrates me just watching it is he put him out Outside 50 on a tight angle, he's fluid, he goes through, he belts his way through the. Hang on, it could be fixing. I think this is the answer for mine. 
Well, get Ed down. He can fix most things. Uh, look, Eddie would be as frustrated as any person in the competition, and I would understand that entirely. Uh, this is the intrusive nature of cameras, Damo. Yep. You would have tried to fix people over the journey, but... We I like how he's using the left hand. We, we probably didn't hand. catch you uh, on camera. Um, You're a captain of a footy club. Yes. And the reason we're showing this, uh, Brody, Grundy, Dane Swan, different cats, everyone knows that. <laughs> this is them as they're running out, to a, out of the banner. Well, guys, tell me, as a captain, yep. if you had have seen that, what would you have done to those well, two guys? Well, the fact that they kicked seven goals to one in the first quarter would be the reason you answer it. I'll tell you what would have happened, though, mate. Back when I was captain, I would have gone off my head if I'd seen it. Yep. What I say now is it um, would have been the wrong response. Yeah. Because the way I think I, players should prepare, or I prepared for a game, pre, like I was in a, I was in such a frenzy when I ran through a banner. I, yeah. I said the red mist. Other players were just, that's not for them. They'd rather go through and just be relaxed. And mm. as long as when the ball bounced, yep. that, and I don't think you'd question those two boys. Now, you jumped the gun a moment ago about the Hawthorne goons. You let's get to it now. You don't like it? It's like a caramel paddle pop. <laughs> well, why? Uh, There's something about the colour brown. It's an impost to a footy club trying to make a, a Guernsey look good, isn't it? That's just made it worse, though, mate. I don't, that's, um, I, don't know what the, I don't know what the theory is behind that, but that is just a horrendous, horrendous playing uniform. Okay. We've been fortunate Could psychologically have affected them? You reckon that's why they lost Could the it? GWS? Hey, this is the fourth time there's been a fire at an AFL venue this year, guys. The people well, in Hobart, though, down didn't down there, care. They, look at them. They're actually... Well, moving toward the fire rather than leading it, guys. The alarm went off at the MCG the other day and not one person moved. No, this is the Australian way. You don't move. When you get the well, footy, you, you don't move. Security should have more authority. Sort that out. Good to me. see your shirts a bit more out there again, too. Got a new sponsorship up here. There it is. Uh, thank you, Damien. Very nice to have you along. Thanks for watching once again. We'll see you next Monday on Access All Areas.